Welcome to Atlanta's Commercial Real Estate Show, brought to you by Bull Realty, the show for property owners and business leaders. Host Michael Bull brings you market analysis, advice, and opportunities around Atlanta. In this segment, let's start off talking about the Atlanta office market. I think the office market has been really unique in how it's changed because the rental rates and occupancies increased more in Atlanta office in the last several years, the last few years, more than it's ever done so before. And if you look at some of this, look, this is a vacancy. And if you look at the blue line, this is from CoStar, and there, where vacancy went from 16 down to 11. Point nine, and when you start talking about the office market, uh, that's the strong numbers. Um, and here's a here's the big shocker: rate growth, rental rate growth has really climbed in Atlanta. Again, you can look. We we use every system there is known to mankind to track commercial real estate. Uh, here at Bull Realty uh, and on our show, we use Reese, CoStar, RC Analytics, uh, Smart Numbers. Uh, we use Excelligent. Uh, we use everything there is, so you'll see some, some different numbers from different companies. Um, but they all kind of show the same thing, that rental rates from 2013 to, to currently have really climbed. If you look at the Coast Stars, $18.50 a foot up to $22.50 a foot you know, for the office market in Atlanta. Now that's A, B, C, and that's the entire market. Now what's interesting is if you look at some specific buildings, and what's happened with the rental rates. And this could mean a lot to your clients or yourself in your own office space to think about your occupancy costs moving forward. Look at some of the rates here. In the building you're sitting in uh, just three years ago in 2014 at 50 Glen Lake Parkway, the rent was $20.16 a foot. It's now $25 a foot. And I'll give you a quick example of how that can impact you. King and Queen building uh, just in 2013 was 25 a foot. It's now 32 a foot. Uh, if you look at a building Alpharetta, it went from 2014, it's just three years from 30 to 33 a foot. I think that's one of the stories about Atlanta commercial real estate going on right now. Because if you run a company, you have seen rates be pretty stable in Atlanta for a long time. In fact, if you're an investor in commercial real estate, you may have, if you're an institutional investor, you may have shied for other cities because traditionally Atlanta has had not, had, not had great rate growth and their value growth. Well, we're starting to see some really big changes. And here's a quick example to, to tell you the difference in the money. All right, so if you look at the 50 Glen Lake Parkway where it was $20 a foot, take a, uh, an office the size of this space here, which is roughly 17,000 square feet. The rent today over just three years ago is $6,856 more per month and an annual $82,000. So that's some real rate shock. So I think if you run a business and you need space or you have clients that do, you really want to get them ready for this so that they're not unprepared when they go out or they're doing the forecasts. Uh, if you look at the King and Queen building, for example, from 2013 to 17, rates went from 25 to 32. You look at the increase there. That, for this size office that we're in today, again about 17,000 square feet, that's $9,900 a month. That's a pretty big line item uh, that you want to be aware of. So some things that I would suggest related to office space, if you're a user or you advise those who do, is get out very early. Really understand what's, what's going on in the marketplace. A lot of our companies, you know, a lot of companies upgraded their office space in the downturn, right? Rents were cheap. In 09, we could go out and rent Class A space with a great view. Uh, and now we're going to see some really high rental rate heights. So we need to look at that and see how we're using office space. And of course the way we've used office space is really changing, right? We have things like shared desk. We have, we have, we're sharing with other companies. We have people working at home. You know, so there's been a lot of changes. One of the changes we've seen here as we rep office tenants is every company trying to use less square footage per employee. Try to cram more people in less space. Well, and some of them, a lot of them are using open floor plans. If you take a quick tour of our office while you're here, you'll see that we've incorporated some open floor plans and some cool pods. And if you've seen here, we have the TV radio studio and we have the coffee shop and we have a lounge and we have a game room. So office users are tending to crowd more people into the workspaces, but then having really cool Wii spaces, right, where people can get together 
uh, and work in that way. So it's really changing the dynamics of how office space works, and it's going to be interesting to see what happens moving forward with space. One of the big things that we're going to be talking about in the next couple of weeks on our show is the wellness factor, becoming a very big issue with office space, especially as you cram more people into less space, right? Somebody's spreading the cold, and all of a sudden your, your productivity drops. So here's some other rates for downtown Bank of America, $28 to $31 in three years. Uh, BB&T and Midtown, $30 to $36. Uh, so some pretty big changes, and we haven't seen those changes like that before. And another situation that's causing that is that we've had very little new supply, right? You, you just have very little new supply uh, in Atlanta for new office space, and that's part of the, the challenge. You know, we're having good, significant job growth, but we're not building new office buildings. And part of that has been because our rents have been so low. Right? Our, our rents have really been too low to go out and build a new office building. Uh, you know, if you can't get $40 a foot, it's hard to build a new Class A tower, right? Cap rates. So um, cap rates for office buildings, as you see here, have been uh, trading down from 2012 to, what, eight and a quarter to uh, presently about 7%. Um, and keep in mind when you look at cap rates and things, especially cap rates for a market or even for the U.S., uh, you, you, there's got to be an adjustment because there may be a lot of Class A core assets that sold in that quarter or in that year or, the, or maybe in one, one period of time more B or C buildings sold, and it'll adjust the reported cap rates. But the big story is cap rates are climbing down. The big story is institutional investors are now interested in Metro Atlanta because we are having rate growth. Uh, they are searching for yield. Uh, they are looking at what some institutional investors consider Atlanta a secondary market. Uh, but more people are interested in buying in Atlanta and the office market's been hot. So, so, so here's some points to consider. Um, we talked about the rent and the rate growth, and so we've covered that. So just be aware of that. Uh, the other thing is the job report, right? We, we're getting great job growth in Atlanta, and I think that's one of the greatest things about our, our economy here in Atlanta. You know, we have the airport, and we have good education, and we have good cost of living, we have good weather, and look around the table, we have good people, right? So I think we're gonna continue to have strong job growth, and another reason that investors are interested in the Atlanta market. Now these slides are available for you if you want me to send them to you. Uh, and also there's the handout here if you want to grab it, the, the small booklet has these inside of it. Here's some recent sales. You can see some cap rates for 3 Ravinia Drive, 7.4 cap rate at $238 a foot. Uh, Wildwood Park, 7 cap, 140 a foot. Um, and you can see the examples. Aid cap, and then Memorial Bend was a kind of a Class C building at a ten and a half cap rate. So somebody's got a strong um, cap rate and cash flow there. And it's interesting to see when people are buying those buildings, you know, how one guy justifies a, a seven cap and one guy ju justifies a ten and a half. And you know, the the ten and a half buyer, he's he's getting cash flow, and but he might not get as much income growth. He might not get as much value growth, where the lower cap rate buyer. He's, buy, he's banking on, he's going to have some rate growth, he's going to have some value add at the end. Um, and so that's going to be part of his, his reasoning for, I asked a guy one time who was paying a three cap for an apartment building in New York. And I said, well, well how do you justify three cap? And he said, Michael, you can't build anymore, it's hard to build an apartment building in New York. So we feel like we're going to get strong rent growth and strong growth in our value. So that's why we can do it. And, and we feel safe with it, right? So here's some potential factors to impact the office market moving forward. Uh, as we said, we're going to have strong job growth. This can still continue to, to be expected. Uh, lack of new supply. There's not any big new supply on the, on, on the horizon. Um, you know, and then some of the things that, that Trump is trying to do could impact the job market. You know, if we have repatriation, if we have infrastructure improvements, if we have lower tax rates, if some of that happens, you know, we could have uh, even more job growth and really help the office market, uh, which if you're a tenant might not be good, <laughs> uh, but if you're a landlord, it is. And then we talked about some of the other factors 
that could negatively impact the office market. Less square footage per employee, more people working from home. That's what we found. Thanks to our presenting sponsor, Bull Realty, and to all of our sponsors linked below. For more Atlanta forecasts, advice, and opportunities, subscribe on YouTube, iTunes, Google Play, and AtlantaCommercialRealEstateShow.com. And be sure to connect, comment, and share on your favorite social media sites.